So hello and welcome back to Geek Panda Tech. So today we have the Samsung S21 Ultra 5G. Now this will be my new main daily driver, uh, taking over from the Xiaomi Mi 10. Now I have had quite a couple of Samsungs over the past year or two now. I was bitterly disappointed with the S20 lineup. The note was much better and I love the pen on that. So let's see how the S21 holds up with the new Exynos 2001. So let's have a quick look around the box. So our usual Samsung design on the front with the S and the number. On the right hand side, just the logo. On the back, not a lot either. And on the right we have Galaxy. On the bottom we have our small little sticker with information on. So we can see that it's 256 gigabytes, 12 gigabytes of RAM, and the color is Phantom Silver. So let's get into the box. Break the security seals here. Take off the lid. And there we have the phone itself. It looks to have come installed with a pre-installed screen protector. Oh no, it's not. <laughs> it's got a little tab at the top to take that off. So let's do that. And there we go. Now let's just take this sticker off the back as well. And wow, that is a big, big camera bump. So it's the same kind of, oh, just one more there. And that fully covers all of the camera lenses there. So I have had the Note, as I said. Now this is the similar layout with the same kind of camera design inside. Obviously it was a little bit more separate from the edge of the phone, but wow, that is, that is big. Now this Phantom Silver, it seems to be really iridescent, not not too much like grey or silver in it. And obviously it's a nice matte finish on the back as you can see there. So hopefully less fingerprints. And let's get this booted on and let's talk about the specs. So this retails for in the UK £1,149. It runs Android 11 with the One UI 3.1 on top. It has a 5,000 milliamp battery. The screen is 6.8 inches. It's an AMOLED with a 515 pixel per inch. It supports HDR 10 plus and 120 Hertz refresh rate. Now that is uh, adaptive, so it will go from anywhere from five to 120. Inside is the Exynos 2100 5 nanometer process chip. Obviously, I'm in the UK, so we don't get the Snapdragon here. But hopefully this time around, Samsung has closed that gap, as it was rather disappointing previously. Moving on, it is 256 gigabytes of storage and 12 gigabytes of RAM. So Samsung have ditched um, SD card support with this model. Uh, the, phone, the, the phone supports up to 5G. And just moving on to the cameras, we have a 108 megapixel main camera, a 10 megapixel um, telephoto lens, 10 times, which is down the bottom here, 10 times optical zoom with the periscope lens just there, the 10 megapixel telephoto lens that supports three times optical zoom and the 12 megapixel ultra wide. Now we do have the laser autofocusing on the back again and just the flash LED there. And on the front, it is 40 megapixel front facing selfie camera. I just felt something on the front of the screen there. Yes, it does actually, I told a lie, it does come with a pre-installed screen protector as they normally do, to be honest. Nice, that is a really thick bezel up the front there, just wrapping around the camera. So I did forget, let's uh, let's carry on and see what else you get in the box. Uh, oh, 
wait, we don't get anything. No plugs anymore, but you do get your trusty charging lead. Now, I pre-ordered this, so I will be getting the Galaxy Buds Pro and the smart tag that you can get here in the UK for pre-ordering. So I'll be looking forward to seeing how they perform. So yeah, you just get your charging cable, USB-C to USB-C. Uh, uh, look, I've got quite a couple of plugs. They, they, they all charge quite fast. I'm still a bit upset that Samsung hasn't really pulled it out of the bag with the faster charging yet. I think this supports 25 watts max still, which is, you know, it's faster than Apple, but it's not as fast as what you can get with like 60 watts being more standard over on other phones. That is a gorgeous display though. Just even just the whites and contrast. Just looking at that with the, yeah. So I'll be right back once we've got this set up. See you in a sec. We're back with the S21 Ultra. Now we'll just have a quick look at that. Look at that gorgeous, gorgeous screen there. And that just went straight in with the fingerprint, even as the screen went black. So we're gonna run a quick um, CPU benchmark test with Geekbench 5. And as we can see there, the model is the Samsung SM Android 11. And it shows you all the cores and the speeds they clock at. So let's run the CPU and we'll skip to the very end. Now let's just have a quick look around the device. So on the right hand side you have your volume rocker and power button slash Bixby button. On the bottom you have the speaker grill, USB-C, microphone, dual SIM support, nothing on the left hand side and on the top I believe you just have two little microphones just there. On the very front of the device still you have a tiny, very tiny little speaker slot that you can just see the glass separates for just above the camera there. And as we can see the results come out with 1072 for the single core score and a 3344 for multi-core score. And obviously there's a bit of a breakdown comparing to other devices just there. So compared to last year's S20 Ultra, this is 272 better. And the multi-core uh, compared to last year also significantly better. Not much better than the OnePlus 8 though, which runs the Snapdragon 865. Now there will be other videos from my good YouTube friends over in the US that will show you the scores from Snapdragon. So before we go, let's have a quick look into the settings. So display bar, so I'd like to change it to dark mode. Dark mode's always great. Brightness is all the way up. Motion smoothness is adapting, so get a smoother animation by scrolling or automatically adjusting the refresh rate up to 120, or you can change it to standard which will just do 60 hertz. Screen mode is also on vivid. You can change it to natural or keep it on vivid and change the white balance if you would like to. Screen resolution default is set to FHD plus, but you can change it to quad HD plus and still keep the 120 hertz refresh rate which is also really nice. So before we go, let's just do what we do and test out the camera. So today I have a new plant, voila. And let's try, just out of the box, let's take a photo with the S21 Ultra. A wide angle, a three times zoom, and the 10 times, which will automatically change through the cameras. There we go. Now let's see if there is a night mode. Which there is there, so let's dim the lights. Let's turn on night mode. And let's 
take a little shot. It's just still processing down there. So a little bit brighter, not much brighter, but there is obviously a bit of backlight behind me. And also just a little reel of video. So this is the S21 Ultra video recording. Let's just zoom it in. Or zoom it out even. Now let's zoom it in. A little bit of noise there with the darkness, I guess. Turn into 10 times. So let's turn the lights on. And you'll see what it can do under different light conditions three times ten times so you can see all the specks of dust on the inside there and that auto focus is pretty good at focusing what I'm pointing at that's pretty cool and if you have any comments please write them down below and I will try and get back to you ASAP I hope you're staying safe I hope you are making the best of what this year has become so far. And I will catch you in the next one. Thank you.